Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Prada from the Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. This Sunday marked one year since jailing of former President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva. Mobilizations will be were held across the country. Lula, his defense team and supporters maintain his innocence one year on, saying that there is no proof and that there was no crime and that his imprisonment was, was legally unjustifiable. <laughs> Our special contributor Michael Fox brings us more details from the Brazilian city of Curitiba, the center of protest since former President Lula da Silva was imprisoned there at the federal police headquarters. The morning rally to defend and demand the release of former President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva is just coming to a close here in Curitiba, Brazil. Former presidential candidate for the Workers' Party, Fernando Haddad, has just spoken, as has uh, Workers' Party President Glacey Hoffman, who read a letter from Lula to the crowds. Uh, organizers say there's roughly 10,000 people here today. They've come from around the country, northeastern Brazil, Brasilia, and the south. They've come down on buses all for this one day. They've been organizing for this for at least a couple of months. Uh, this is a big day. It's the one-year anniversary of Lula's imprisonment, uh, and he has been in this jail just in front of us, this federal police prison, for exactly one year. Um, and his supporters say it is time for him to, really, to be released. They say he's a political prisoner, uh, and they say that he was only uh, brought to jail in order to block him from running in last year's elections. It was an extension of the coup that, that took out Dilma Rousseff, uh, the impeachment in 2016. Uh, and if he had run in last year's elections, he would have won. He did not, and, uh, and Jair Bolsonaro, far-right president, is now in the presidency. So his supporters say they are not going to stop. Um, Joao uh, Stegio, who's one of the leaders of the MST, called on uh, the people here to form their own free Lula committees in their own communities to really demand Lula's freedom and keep the pressure on uh, for the months and the years to come. Thank you, Mike. And people around the world are standing in solidarity with former Brazilian president. In London, for example, supporters took to the top of the iconic red double-decker buses with Brazilian flags and a giant banner which read, Lula is a political prisoner. We are here in London on the free Lula bus. We are movements and activists, both Brazilian and from here in the UK, fighting for Lula's freedom and denouncing the unjust imprisonment. We know why Lula was jailed. It was nothing to do with anything he did. Lula is innocent. If he were free, he'd be president of Brazil today. And the same solidarity could be seen in North Northwest England, in cities like Manchester, where supporters held Free Lula and Lula Libre placards. Also in Barcelona, the famous chant, which was heard all around Brazil in the run-up to 2018 presidential elections, made its way to Europe. They chanted, Brazil, urgente, Lula, president. And earlier this Sunday, our correspondent in Sao Paulo, Brian Mir, sent us this report with details. I'm standing on Paulista Avenue in downtown Sao Paulo, where thousands of people have gathered on the streets to show their solidarity with former Brazilian President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva on this, the one-year anniversary of his unjust and illegal political imprisonment at the hands of Judge Sergio Moro, who went on to become Justice Minister for the man he helped win the elections, Jair Bolsonaro. Now, Lula was allowed to write his first op-ed piece since he was in prison today. And in an article published in Folio de São Paulo, he said, 
they thought they could shut me up by holding me in solitary confinement. But what they didn't know is that there are millions of Lulas. And these millions of Lulas are the people who support the project for Brazil that he represented it. With sovereignty, self-determination, national development includes all of the people who were traditionally excluded in this country for the first 500 years of its existence. So today, for five hours, thousands of people have come out here to yell Lula livre and see speeches by former presidential candidate Guilherme Boulos, PT President Glazy Hoffman, and listen to protest music and to sing along with it. And the mood is positive. There are people telling me they think that Lula's freedom is only a matter of time. Thank you, Brian. And in the march, as you could see, our correspondent Brian Mir uh, was able to check and get these uh, statements on students and unionists who gather on the Paulista Avenue in Sao Paulo. I'm here in the name of freedom for President Lula because he was arrested because they didn't want the people to control the country anymore. They didn't want the people to have dignity anymore. And this is why they arrested him and they put Bolsonaro in power. And on Saturday, thousands mobilized throughout Venezuela in support of peace and to reject foreign intervention in the country. Caracas residents marched to the Miraflores Palace in defense of the Venezuelan sovereignty following weeks of attacks against the country's electrical grid. Demonstrators said that they are standing by their democratically elected government again and against U.S. imperialism. <laughs> In Colombia, social Minga leaders and the Colombian government reached an agreement on Saturday night. Representatives of the indigenous campesino and Afro-descendant communities said that they reached a compromise on issues such as human rights, peace, territory, education and health, among others. The government and leaders also agreed that a monetary fund should be created for indigenous people. The communities held protests for almost a month, demanding that the government fulfill a series of ratifications with date back to 1991. I to inform the indigenous, campesino and Afro-descendant people that on Saturday night we reach an agreement with the government in areas such as peace, human rights, land and the environment. We also agreed to the reinforcement of the Guard and the Fund Grant for Indigenous People. I also want to say that we are continuing with the social Minga, and after the Minga mobilizations, we will continue to call for a national strike. And after making agreements with the social Minga leaders, Colombian President Ivan Duque arrived in the city of Popoyan, the capital of the Cauca department. He took to Twitter to announce that the mate will, with local authorities and social representatives to access the damage caused by the Panam to the Pan American Highway as results of the roadblocks. Indigenous campesinos and Afro-descendant communities blocked the road as part of their ongoing protests against the government. Like this, we we'll make a very short break here and from the South. Make sure you follow us on social media and Twitter. You find us as at, at, at Telesur English and on my account at Laura Pitelser. Stay with us. by inequalities, abuse of power and injustice. The American journalist Abby Martin covers the struggle for fundamental rights worldwide. Deepen into the search of files which uncover the empire's strategies. To our screen and web platform in English. The Empire Files with Abby Martin. Tuesday, only on Telesur.
And we begin beyond Latin American frontiers because a new and promising party has officially entered South Africa's politics. The Socialist Revolutionary Workers' Party launched in Johannesburg over the weekend. It will contest next month's general elections. The political organization represents the working class. To know more on the following story. It started as a slow day as members of the Socialist Revolutionary Workers' Party made their way to this venue in eastern Johannesburg. The program officially kicked off with a song and dance. Shortly after, delegates deliberated intensely before the party's leadership was elected. Socialist Revolutionary Workers' Party chairperson Irvin Jim outlined the problems his organization seeks to solve. We're talking about 30.4 million South Africans today with absolutely no plate of food, poverty is rife, unemployment and inequalities. The Independent Electoral Commission has confirmed nearly 27 million South Africans are registered to vote. That's over half of the population. This gives the Socialist Revolutionary Workers' Party a fighting chance to win the hearts and minds of South Africans who are frustrated by problems like inequality. But it won't be easy as other political parties are also sharpening their swords. Some of these organizations include the fast-growing Economic Freedom Fighters, which has also positioned itself as a socialist party for the jobless. Our main mission is to unite both the working class, um, organized working class and the unemployed and the peasants in the villages, in the, in, in, in the rural areas. And what is our, our, our agenda? We of the view that this party will succeed by pursuing a revolutionary agenda. Perhaps that success will be driven by the party's mother body, the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa. It is among the biggest trade unions in the country and will want to ensure its members vote for its political wing, the Socialist Revolutionary Workers Party. And Rwanda's president said the country has become a family once again while marking the 25th anniversary of the genocide that killed about 800,000 people. Paul Kagam led a remembrance flame in the capital, Kigali. Rwandans will mourn for 100 days. That's equivalent to the time it took for about a tenth of the country to be massacred in 1994. Most of those killed were minority Tutsis and moderate Hutus. Attackers were the ethnic Hutus forces. This crime was not without colonial roots, but was a continuation of a pattern of hostility installed by the Belgians. In 1994, there was no hope, only darkness. Today, light radiates from this place. Our bodies and minds bear amputations and scars but none of us is alone. Together, we have woven the tattered threads of our unity into a new tapestry. And the Russian President Vladimir Putin has held talks at the Kremlin with the President of Angola, Joao Lourenço. The two leaders spoke about a strengthening cooperation in trade, economy and culture, as well as current international and regional matters. Putin and Lourenço signed six documents regarding cooperation in diamond mining, gas and oil production, space and agriculture. Lourenço distinguished Putin with a high Angolan distinction, the Agostinho Neto Order, named after the first president of Angola. This as gratitude for the years of support. And the president of Iran's parliament, Ali Larijani, 
has called the unilateralism of Washington and Zionism a danger to the world. The Persian legislator made the remarks in Qatar during the 140th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union. The Muslim nations will never accept the policies aligned with the United States and the Zionist regime. The international community has ignored the oppression of the Palestinian people for decades for the benefit of the Israeli regime, so that the poor Palestinian people do not have another remedy than the resistance in their legitimate and unalienable right. And Russia and Syria have rejected United States' refusal to recognize Syria's serenity over the Golan Heights. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov criticized Washington on Sunday and said U.S. actions regarding the Syrian Golan Heights are unlawful. Lavrov also questioned U.S. support for terrorist groups operating in Syrian territory. The U.S. decision has led to massive protests all over the Arab country and at the U.N. Security Council. And Libya's government of national accord has announced a an operation called Volcano of Anger. This operation is designed to defend the capital Tripoli against Libyan National Army forces which are approaching. Military officers loyal to General Khalifa Haftar have advanced from the east from the, with the aim of taking Tripoli. The prime minister has accused Haftar of attempting to carry out a coup and he said rebels will be met with force. From the times that the so-called moderate rebels, who were backed by U.S. and NATO, overthrew Muammar Gaddafi, the country has been in turmoil. The country is now severely divided since NATO's intervention, and many believe it is on the verge of a civil war. We are pledging to our people that we will preserve the civil state. We are inviting the delusional and brainwashed to surrender their weapons. The battle is over and we will not allow the militarization of the nation. Libya will not be a military state. Its military will only have loyalty to God and then the nation. And thousands of Sudanese protesters demonstrated overnight calling on President Omar al-Bashir to step down. However, Bashir Bashir has refused to do so, alluding that this, his opponents need to seek power through the ballot box. Police have used tear gas and stun grenades to disperse the protesters who keep chanting, Sudan is rising, the army is rising. And the Tunisian president has announced that he will, be, he will not be running for re-election in November, despite his party calling for him to do so. 93-year-old Beji Kaid Esebi said the time has come to pave the way for someone younger. However, the 2014 adopted constitution gives him the right to run for two terms. Esebi won the first free presidential elections following the 2011 revolution that toppled Sin Abidin Ben Ali, who ruled for 23 years. Expat Algerians have been making their way home to take part in protests as they demand a complete overhaul of the government. The protesters have said that the resignation of Abdelaziz Bouteflika is just the beginning as the, rest of the government also has to leave. They are calling these demonstrations the building of a second republic. This marks seven consecutive weeks of protests in the country. There was no other option but to come to Algeria to be amongst everyone. We have, like all over the world at the moment, you can see Algerians coming out in their hundreds and thousands to try and come for one, one main goal and one purpose, is the betterment of the country and the betterment of the nation, and so that people, people's voices are heard, as you can see. But we had to come to Algeria along with my mum, my family, uh, my cousins, my uncle. And Greek police fired tear gas on hundreds of migrants who were hoping to enter northern Europe on Saturday. The trouble flared outside the Dia Beit camp after a social media rumor claimed that travel restrictions had been lifted. Rumors were that human rights groups stood ready to assist migrants in crossing into North Macedonia and overward the other United European Union states. The migrants threw sticks and stones at police as they tried to break through the police cordon and reach the main road leading to the border. Open, 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 open. 
and thousands of protesters marched through the streets of Lausanne in Switzerland, calling on the government to take actions against climate change. Demonstrators hope to push environmental issues into the political agenda with federal elections scheduled later this year. Protesters can, could be heard singing, we are hotter, hotter than the climate. Time for a second and very short break. More news when we are back. Discover the cultural diversity that defines a continent. The place where art and tradition are part of the same nucleus. Artistic expressions. Values. Fridays, only on this world. Hundreds of Uruguayans held protests at the concert in support of a law granting rights to trans people. Activists and members of the LB, LGBTQ community gathered in the capital Montevideo in support of the law, which was approved in 2018. That law seeks to protect transgender people from harms and facilitates changes to official documents. However, a conservative group got enough support to possibly overturn their legislation they have enough votes to petition the parliament to order referendums so people can vote for or against the law. They are trying to take away that right we have fought so hard for. So we are mobilizing ourselves through artistic expression. What we are trying to show people is that we are all united and that is not going to pass. The trans law will not end. We will continue. And moving on to Costa Rica, violence has increased in indigenous territories since the murder of indigenous leader Sergio Rojas. Let's find out more on the following story. Disputes continue in the indigenous territory of Salitre after leader Sergio Rojas was shot 15 times. Rebeer indigenous people say they are under attack. Salitre is experiencing significant violence with activists being threatened and shot at. People in the community are afraid. After my dad's death, things have only gotten worse. Persons interested in owning lands within indigenous communities are inciting violence. Some houses are being burnt to the ground. However, many speculate that there is conflict brewing among indigenous people as well. There is conflict because people assume we don't want other indigenous people within our communities. This is not the case. What we don't want is landowners to enter our territory because they have no legitimate right to do so. The threats being made are very real. Before Sergio Rojas was murdered, he was threatened. Another leader, Pablo Sivas, coordinator at the Buran Community Council, has also been threatened. We have received messages and threats through social media saying that we must be killed. They are inciting violence. Sivas has since criticized the government for its inaction relative to the violence perpetrated against indigenous communities. We suspect that the person responsible for the violence are all non-indigenous people. 
or those who own lands in shadow territories. They are the ones that are shooting and intimidating us. An investigation published by the Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia has shown that from 2010, at least 118 incidents of violence have been reported, which includes the murder of Sergio Rojas. These crimes are alleged to have been committed by non-indigenous farmers. It's easy to believe that those responsible for this violence would not resort to these drastic measures if they had documents to prove that they have rights to our lands. Of the 12,000 hectares of the Salitre territory, 29% of the lands are owned by non-indigenous people, according to the Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia. And migrants joined the by migrant rights organization have rallied to the Mexican state of Chiapas to protest against deportations. Demonstrations brought figures representing U.S. President Donald Trump and his Mexican counterpart, Andres Manuel López Obrador. The rally was held outside the National Immigration Institute office where migrants have to process their paperwork and documents. They asked for more protection and demanded a change in migration policies. A policy that encourages discrimination that Donald Trump is imposing on Mexico. López Obrador has become just another peon of Donald Trump. That's why we burn these effigies. We burn the piñatas to get the public's attention. In this public outcry should pressure these people to change the current immigration policy. And participants in a marathon in the Chilean capital, Santiago de Chile, have paid tribute to the people that were abducted or detained during the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. A group from the Association of Families wore white t-shirts with the faces of their loved ones printed on the front and the back. More than 30,000 people participated in the Santiago Marathon, one of the most important sporting events in the city. Thousands of people were killed, arrested or abducted during the Pinochet dictatorship from 1973 to 1990. For me, it's important that we are able to build the future based on the memory of what occurred during the dictatorship. And it's important that in Chile we never forget that these atrocious crimes occurred, that mothers still die without knowing where their children are, and that family members still can't find any answers, a country where impunity still exists. Like this, we've come to the end of this brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website, terrestrialenglish.net, where, of course, you can find opinion articles, special interviews, and much material that we produce. Continue with Telesur, connecting the global thousands. Until next time, thank you for watching.